Bonsoir. La deuxième. La, la deuxième, oui. Bonsoir, Laïsa Minelli. Nous avons la chance de vous avoir en Suisse en ce moment. Et nous avons la chance aussi d'avoir Cabaret, l'un de vos films qui date de 1972, qui est signé par Bob Foss. Alors, Cabaret a été un film, je pense, important pour vous. Oui. Quel souvenir reste de, de, de ce film Well, it was a wonderful experience because it not only um, changed uh, the, the, the history of, of movie musicals, it reverted back to something that was uh, what they used to call the backstage musical, where musical numbers always made sense. In other words, Like, for instance, there's only singing in the cabaret. Nobody bursts into song on the street and so forth. Which is funny for me, because my father was the one who changed it the other way around. And then in this day and age, I was lucky enough to be part of the film that, again, made the turn. Et c'est Cabaret qui vous a révélé sur le plan international. What? Is, that, is this how, you start, how it started internationally for you? I, I, think you, I think you're a better judge of that than I am. You. For me, I, I was nominated, you know, for Sterile Cuckoo, but I, I suppose Cabaret is, is uh, so very important because it was so very different. I'm just so, I'm, I'm really proud to be in it. Liza, avant de parler encore de cinéma, je voudrais que nous parlions de musical. Oui. Après New York, New York, vous êtes revenu sur scène. Alors, je voudrais savoir, comme vous faites une tournée en Europe, quelle est la différence de réaction entre le public américain, vous avez fait une tournée en Amérique, vous avez joué à Broadway, oui. et la réaction du public en Europe, Copenhague, Dortmund, etc. Well, I think that the, um, the main difference in the European reaction is that one is trained in America to do uh, like a lot of, you have to sing and dance and act or else it's very hard to get a job. Do you know what I mean? Especially if you want to be on Broadway, which is where I started. So I found that in, in Europe, Everybody is really a specialist. In other words, people sing so beautifully, or they dance perfectly, or they act. But um, the combination people seem to like in Europe, and, and it, uh, it's more surprising to them than it is in America. So they're more appreciative. So besoin, cette nécessité d'abandonner pour quelque temps le cinéma et de revenir à la scène. Est-ce que ce n'était pas pour vous un besoin de retrouver un contact et avec le public absolument. et un besoin de vous rassurer vous-même Non, ce n'est pas pour moi. Uh, ok, je parle en anglais. Ce n'est pas pour ma propre assurance. It... It's just very good to always keep in contact with people who are alive. You know, you can be in front of a camera and you know what making movies is like. You make a film and it takes forever, you know. And then you go away for six months and they put it together and it comes out. And you're not really in touch with people. And acting is the art of translating how people feel. So you have to stay in touch with people. So I find that that, it's like recharging a battery. You know, to get back to the live public, it, it makes me understand more and I can give more and uh, sustain myself in a film. Avez-vous eu peur de retrouver ce contact direct avec mm. le public. Oh no, I love people. You know, Peur de retrouver la scène. No. 
No, I love it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's exciting to me. It's fun. Je voudrais savoir, et pardonnez-moi l'indiscrétion de la question, quelle est la part Judy Garland, quelle est la part Vincente Minelli dans Liza Minelli? My mother gave me my guts. My father gave me my dreams. And the combination seems to work, you know. By guts, I mean, she gave me a go, do, you can do it, encouragement. Both of them always encouraged me. Uh, but she gave me uh, feminine strength, and my father gave me a, a world of colors. Liza, je ne peux pas ne pas profiter de votre présence pour vous demander des nouvelles de Vincente Minelli, votre père, qui a eu beaucoup de problèmes avec son dernier film, La Contessa, A Matter mm -hmm. of Time. Comment va-t-il et que fait-il He's doing wonderfully. He, at this point in his life, is turning down almost everything that they offer him. And I say, Daddy, why? I mean, my God, you know. And he says, because I, I only want to do what I want to do. <laughs> and uh, you have to admire that from a man who gave us all so much. You know? But he'll find something, because he's so full of activity. He's full of life, still. I think he's, he's actually writing something now, and I think he won't talk about it. My father is very funny. He's very private. He won't talk about what he's doing, but I think he's writing something. Liza, you are not happy to be the daughter of Judy Garland and of Vincente Minelli. The beginning of your career, I mean, at 16 years, for example, at 16 years, you started to play at Broadway, the theater of Broadway, right? Yes. Is that a revolution when you told the family that I was going to be able to do it all alone? No. Actually, <laughs> I wanted to be an ice skater. And because I always loved to dance. That was my first love, right? And then I went to a show, a Broadway show. I'd never seen a Broadway show. And I went, my mother took me, and I was 13, and I saw Bye Bye Birdie. And there were all kids up there on the stage, and they were dancing, and they were singing. And it looked like so much fun. That's what I decided that's what I wanted to do. So my, my original uh, ambition was to be a, a chorus dancer. <laughs> and then I found, like I said before, that you can't, in America, you can't get a chorus job unless you can sing and act. So I had to learn how to sing because I didn't have my mother's gift of a natural voice. <laughs> no. Alors, votre mère surveillait beaucoup votre carrière. Il y a un exemple. Je ne sais pas s'il est vrai, mais je crois qu'il est vrai. Vous deviez jouer Carnival. Et votre mère ne voulait pas que vous jouiez ce, ce rôle. Et elle avait téléphoné de partout pour vous empêcher. Est-ce exact? Yes, that's true. But at that time, my mother was lonely. And she wanted me to stay. She wanted me to come home. And it was just at the time in my life when I couldn't go home. I, I, I had to do it, and uh, I said, Mama, I have a contract. I've signed a piece of paper. And she said, break it. And I said, I can't do that. Too many jobs depend on it. What about the other people? And then she said, uh -huh. you make me mad, but I admire you. It's very easy to be typecast. But I think the only interesting characters to play are characters with problems. And uh, the difference and the scope and size of the, the problems of each character that I really admire, that I've played, for instance, in The Sterile Cuckoo, uh, 
uh, in Cabaret, of course, in Lucky Lady, with three uh, lost people, but they were all lost in different ways. In New York, New York, with the help of uh, Scorsese, De Niro, uh, you know, and everything, I, I've, and as you were kind enough to say to me before, I feel like I graduated into playing a, a mature woman. And De Niro was the crazy one, not me. <laughs> he was the one who went bananas. I got to stay calm. But New York, New York, c'est surtout une belle histoire d'amour. Oui. Mais Liza, vous ne pensez pas que vos metteurs, vos metteurs en scène, que ce soit uh, Stanley Donnan, que ce soit Faust, que ce soit um, Martin Scorsese, uh, recherchent, uh, ont un peu la nostalgie en faisant ces films, le qu'il est dit, uh, New York, New York, Cabaret, ont un peu la nostalgie Hollywood des années 30, et que pour eux, vous êtes un prétexte pour aller vers, ce, vers cette nostalgie. Uh, my father once told me something that I always remember, that everything is a circle. And really nothing is terribly new, but it's done differently all the time. So when I happened to start making films, the first film I made was uh, Current. Uh, then Cabaret started a whole new f fashion and going back, nobody made it, except for The Damned, I think, and, and some other, absolutely, some other marvelous foreign films, really. But an American film about the 30s hadn't really been done. Lucky Lady was, again, a character piece. New York, New York, nobody had done what I think is the ultimate film on the 40s and about musicians. New York, New York is a subculture film. You know? It's about music, musicians, and how they work, how they think. It's not a musical. <laughs> Comment expliquez-vous que le public américain préfère, par exemple, maintenant, Grease, pour donner cet exemple récent Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de Grease, vous, par exemple It's a different nostalgia. You know, it's a... Uh... First of all, New York, New York was advertised in America wrong. They advertised it as a musical. Comedy. The first, see, what happened was the first two weeks of shooting in New York, New York, we shot the production number, which in the movie you just see a little bit of. But it was a, it was a big production number like they used to have in the, the films of the 40s and 50s. For instance, the American in Paris Ballet, the Girl Hunt Ballet in Bandwagon, uh, in The Pirate, the dream sequence, in Yolanda and the Thief, the, you know, And we did this whole, we did a 12 minute number. That was the first thing we shot. Then when we went and we did the film, the film changed the perspective of the movie. It became much more serious than we thought. And suddenly at the end of it, to put in this big lavish production number, it, it was frivolous and it didn't work. But the public was expecting so much that they advertised too much and too soon, and they advertised it like a big, happy Broadway, you know, musical, like the 40s again, and the 50s, and this, that, and the other, and so forth. And it didn't turn out to be that way. So I think they got, America got upset. <laughs> and they felt like they'd been duped. Do you understand? Il y a une chose qui nous frappe aussi en Europe, au niveau de la nouvelle génération oui. de cinéastes américains. Euh, je veux parler de Lucas, de Spielberg, de Scorsese oui. et de quelques autres. Alors, il y a deux solutions. Soit ils regardent vers le fantastique, Star Wars, etc., etc. Oui. Soit ils regardent vers le musical, soit... Mais on a l'impression qu'ils ne regardent plus la réalité américaine avec leur caméra. Comment expliquez-vous cela 
Well, I think in the case of Scorsese, that's not quite accurate because Mean Streets... Uh, taxi Driver? Taxi, you know, mm. he's very down to earth. In fact, I think that it was Scorsese that elevated underground films to popular underground mm. films. He made that transition and he allowed and all of these other directors that you just mentioned will tell you, I mean, they may not tell you, but <laughs> I mean, they told me the same thing. He opened a door for everybody. I, I always feel that, uh, and it seems to have proven itself, that every 10 years there is, every decade, there is a country that's in, you know? And especially in film. And now in this decade, it's come back to America. All of the young, there's these young guys who are just dying to express themselves. And it's kind of fun that it's back in Hollywood again, where it all started. <laughs> Au niveau du cinéma américain aussi, Liza, il y a euh, un engagement politique au niveau de certains acteurs ou actrices. Exemple, Jane Fonda, Coming Home, yes. film que vous connaissez. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous pensez du, du militantisme des acteurs et des actrices Est-ce que vous pensez qu'un acteur ou une, une actrice doit avoir un rôle finalement politique à travers les films qu'il fait well, I think that... It's important to know the facts. Um, I admire the enthusiasm of people who try to help anybody. But I also think that it's wrong to use the power that the public has given you And let's face it, it is the public. They've given you that. They've said, we like you, so you're, you know, that's it. To, to use that power to influence them in something that is not your real business. And I, to me, I, I don't know, it, it's, it's a... Vous vivez, Liza, dans votre temps. Vous connaissez les problèmes de votre oui. temps. Yes, but I, I feel that what you're asking me is, do I do anything? Yes, I do do things, but I don't publicize it because it's not the business I'm in. Vous pensez qu'une qu'une actrice doit apporter au public avant tout euh, le rêve, l'évasion, la joie. Do you think uh, an actress, first of all, should bring p to, p to the public uh, joy and distraction and... Dream. And dreams. Only. I think it's your job, if you're good, to make people stop thinking about themselves. Whether it's joy or sadness or anything or excitement, whatever you do, it's your job to disturb people. Je connais moi l'un de vos rêves, un rêve que vous avez. Je crois que vous avez un rêve, c'est de jouer au théâtre Shakespeare. Oui. Par exemple, euh, La Mégère apprivoisée. Tell me of the shrew. Yes. Yes, but that's not, that's not really the one that I wanted. I'd rather do, I want to do Joan of Arc. You know, and yeah, I, I'd love to do Shakespeare. I'd love I love all of that thing. I I like to expand. You know, for instance, I just did a a new ballet with Martha Graham at the mm -hmm. Metropolitan Opera, and uh, it worked. <laughs> I mean, it worked. It was it was wonderful. It it worked and. Uh, Nuriev and uh, Bereshnikov and 
Jerry Robbins, people I admire, said that I had made that step that in my field, I would crossed over to, into their field successfully. And uh, I, was, I was very happy about it. Anytime you can grow, that's, that's, the, that's the most exciting thing in the world. Vous donnez une impression de fragilité. En réalité, vous êtes très forte et vous avez beaucoup de caractère. Oui. Est-ce que cette force, ce caractère, ne sont pas des éléments qui empêchent Liza Minelli, femme, d'être heureuse Vous avez compris ma question Oui. Happiness consists of two things to me. One is the rush of suddenly feeling happy. Two is contentment. Now, in order to feel both of those things, you have to know the other side of happiness. I've met that other side. I've dealt with it. I've lived with it. And I, I appreciate the happiness that I get out of my life. Liza. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez d'une date, le une date, une que date, une euh, date. date. Yeah. le 8 novembre 1964 Le 8 novembre 1964 mm -hmm. à Londres au Palladium. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yes. Yes. Est-ce que c'était les la première fois que vous chantiez avec votre mère? Oui. C'est extraordinaire pour moi. It was a wonderful experience. It was wonderful. The whole thing was wonderful. You know. The press have always tried to make it sound like my mother and I were, you know, uh, like what most mothers and daughters go through which is rivalry. Maybe I can put it a simpler way. It takes usually... In Europe it's different, but in America with all of this women's lib and this, this whole thing, usually a mother and a daughter go through three or four years of, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Well, for God's sake, no. You know, it's that thing of, the, of a woman, when the mother suddenly realizes that the girl is a woman and she views her as another woman. It's, it's a lot to take for, for a mother. I, I went through four years and two hours on that stage with my mother. We got it all out of the way. It was all, it was like I, I went through that whole terrible period that people go through for years. In two hours I went through with my mother. And it ended up beautifully. And I had more fun and she loved it and she was, she touched me so much because she was such a mother. She was such a beautiful mama and so caring about all of us, my sister, my brother, and I. And I'm her first child. She's always said, you know, that you're my first, I'll, you know, whatever. And whatever rivalry we ever had only demonstrated itself in our own minds on that stage. Nobody in the world saw it, but the two of us went through it. So every time that the press has ever said, we were rivals, or like before you said your mother didn't want you to do carnival and this, that, and the other. It was a, di it was a different thing. It's a different thing. She, uh, she had magic, and she realized that she had infused 
that magic in me as she had said, look at that sunset. My God, look at that moon. Jesus, look what a beautiful sky that is. And I'd understood that. And she was a little surprised that I'd understood about the, you know, the, the vibrancy of life. And uh, it all came out. And at the end, she ended up being terribly proud and happy. métier que votre mère, oui. est-ce que parfois vous n'avez pas l'angoisse, vous n'avez pas peur du métier terrible que vous faites Non, I have, see I grew up with my mother constantly teaching me about her fears. She once said to me, Watch me, and when I get upset, when I get depressed, when I get disillusioned, learn from it. You know, I'm the best example of what I don't want you to do. And I always respected that. The, the press and uh, various people have tried to make me sound like I am frivolous or even promiscuous, and I'm not. I was instilled with probably the highest moral values that I've ever heard of by my family, and I've stuck to them. But I learned another thing from my mother. One time, I was on the school bus. I was going to school. And I passed a newspaper stand, and I looked out the window, and it said, Judy Garland runs uh, naked through her house trying to kill herself. And all of the children on the school bus started to laugh at me, you know. And I, I knew that wasn't true because I'd been with her. And I went home and I was crying because the children had been so mean. And uh, I said, Mama, it's not true. You have to tell them. You have to, you have to tell them it's not true so that they can write it differently in the paper so that, so that they won't misunderstand. And she said, no. Let them build a legend. I'll live by my own morals. Je vous remercie, Liza, et j'espère, nous espérons tous, vous retrouver bientôt dans un nouveau film. I will. Thank you so much. Merci. Thank you, Christian.